Hey, this is Horner, and we're going to look at the problems for section 18.1 and 18.2 in your book. The first problem says a battery charger delivers about 3 amps for 4 hours to a 12-volt storage battery. Uh, they want to know what is the total charge that passes through the battery in that time. Uh, remember, our equation that we have is I, which is current, is equal to the change in charge, delta Q, over the time period. So we want to find the change in charge, then that should be equal to our current times our change in time. The current that they gave us is 3 amps, so we'll put that 3 amps in here. And then the time that we have is 4 hours, but we need to convert that 4 hours into seconds uh, because we remember uh, amps are equal to a coulomb per second. And so now what we want to do here is we've got amps, we have hours, and we need to convert this to seconds. So to do that, we know in one hour there are 3,600 seconds. And if you do your math, you should end up with 4.3 times 10 to the fourth coulombs. And that is your final answer. For problem number two, uh, this one says the current in a wire is 0.5 amps. How much charge flows through the cross-section of the wire in 10 seconds? And then they want to know how many electrons move through that same cross-section in that same 10 seconds. So the first thing they want us to do is try to figure out charge. So remember Q is equal to I delta T. So this is change in charge. So this really does kind of look like quit. Uh, this is, but don't quit, you want to do this one. So this is equal to 0.5 amps times our time, which is 10 seconds. And so here we're going to end up with, remember this is a coulomb per second, so the seconds cross off, and we're left with coulombs, which is what we want. And so this is going to be 5 coulombs of charge. For letter B, uh, we're going to, we know that uh, the number here is equal to the change in charge. So that's our 5 coulombs divided by 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs for every electron. Uh, if I plug in my numbers here, uh, I'm going to have 5 coulombs on the top and on the bottom 1 times 10 to the negative 19th, sorry, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs for every electron, and that will give me 3.12 times 10 to the 19th electrons. So quite a bit of electrons, quite a large number. For number four, this one, uh, you have an ion accelerator. So basically, you have a great big device that has an electric field, and it's accelerating helium-4 nuclei. So these have a charge of positive 2e because they've lost two electrons. So it's two neutrons, two protons, that's why we call it helium-4. Uh, and there are three times 10 to the 13 of these nuclei. And those uh, all strike a, uh, uh, a target once per second. Uh, so there's this many strikes the target in a second. They want to know what is the beam current. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to think about what this really is. So this is three times 10 to the 13th, and that's things per second. So that's actually a frequency, which is really helpful. If you remember, frequency is also equal to 1 over period, and then period is equal to 1 over frequency, where period is really just a time. So that's the thinking part that you're going to have to do with this problem. Uh, let's go back and let's get back to the problem at hand here, and we know that I is equal to the change in charge over the change in time. But we said time here is actually equal to 1 over frequency. So I'm going to change that to, oops, this keeps jumping on me here. I'm going to change that <clears throat> to delta Q over 1 over frequency. Well, if I have something over something over something, I really can just multiply the very top and the very bottom things together. So this is delta Q times frequency. So let's figure out the charge. I know I've got this many nuclei. I know that there is a charge of 2 times the elemental, uh, the uh, regular uh, elemental charge here. So we're going to take 2 times that charge, which is 1.6. Uh, 0, 02 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs, and then we're going to multiply that by 
the frequency, which is really just the number that we have here. So this is 3 times 10 to the 13th. Uh, when we get done, we're going to end up with 9.6 times 10 to the negative 6th amps. And if you remember your prefixes, that's just 9.6 microamps. And that's the end of that problem. A little bit different problem, which we're kind of used to. Not as straightforward. Uh, for next one, number eight, this says a Vespa scooter and a Toyota automobile both use a 12-volt battery, but the two batteries are much different in size and they can uh, pump different amounts of charge. So suppose a scooter battery uh, can pump four kilocoulombs of charge and the automobile battery can do 30 kilocoulombs of charge. How much energy can each battery deliver assuming the batteries are uh, ideal? So for number eight, let's uh, go ahead and take a look at the scooter first. We know that work is equal to our E values. Remember this is our EMF times Q. So that's equal to the 12 volts times our charge, which is 4,000 coulombs. And so here we get 48,000 joules of work that can be done. In the automobile, so this is the scooter, in the automobile, we're going to use the same equation. We've got 12 volts, but this time we have 30,000 coulombs uh, of uh, charge. And so we get 360,000 joules. So obviously there's more energy or more work that can be done by that, uh, by that battery. So a lot more energy from the car battery itself. For the next question, this is number 10. It says uh, the label on a 12 volt truck battery sets, states that it's rated at 180 amp hours. Um, they want us to treat this battery as ideal. They want to how much charge of coulombs can be pumped by it. And we're going to have to convert amp hours to amp seconds. Uh, they want to how much electricity can the battery supply. And then finally, suppose the radio in the truck is left on when the engine's not running. The radio draws 3.30 amps and they want us to know how long is it going to be before that battery is drained and we can't start the truck. Let's uh, go ahead and do the first part. So this is letter A. Uh, we've got to convert the amp hours to amp seconds. So to do that, I've got 180 amp times an hour, and I want to convert that to seconds. So I want to get the hours out of the equation. So I'm going to cross it off by putting it on the bottom. And then on the top, I need to put seconds. And we know that there are 3,600 seconds in an hour. So now I'm left with uh, my answer, which is 6.48 times 10 to the fifth. Uh, and then this is going to be coulombs. So that's how much charge, that is how much charge is in the battery. Alrighty, so uh, next thing we need to do is letter B. They want how much electric energy does it supply? So remember that's the work, and that's equal to the EMF times the charge. Our EMF here is 12 volts, and then we have 6.48 times 10 to the fifth coulombs of charge from what we did before, and that would be 7,780,000 joules or 7.78 times 10 to the sixth joules or you could say 7.78 mega joules any of those would work uh, last thing they want us to do is find out how long it would take before the battery would die so that's change in time is equal to the change in q over the oops over the current and we uh have the current there. So this is equal to 6.48 times 10 to the fifth. That's the charge. We're going to divide it by 3.3 amps. And we know that we also need to con uh, go through and let's put in uh, one hour is 3,600 seconds. That'll convert our answer from seconds into hours because it'll make a lot more sense. And then this will be 54.5 hours. This step is not necessary, okay, but a good idea.
because uh, otherwise you'd have a, a tremendous number of seconds for this, and you'd have to go ahead and con divide it by 3,600 in order to get hours anyway. So we just saved a step there. And that is the end of this problem set.